Hi guys, Yegi here with another lash tutorial. For today's look, we're going to do a full set of light volume handmade fans. And these are not easy to fan eyelashes. They're the Yegi Cashmere Wispy Lashes in the 0 0.05 thickness. Now, these lashes are best to be fanned out on the strip itself instead of pinching them. So if you do use the pinching method, these lashes are probably not the best fit for you. But within the video, I will show a lot of tips as I'm completing the set with how to do the full eyelash extension service. I will also show you a little trick or a tip of how to fan the lashes on the strip and make a nice handmade fan. First, you grab a bunch of eyelashes and place it next to the lash strip. Next, you're going to grab your volume boot tweezers and you're going to shimmy them and wiggle on the strip itself in order to fan them out. A little trick to help them fan out is by tilting your tweezers towards you at a 90 degrees angle and afterwards dipping it in the glue to bring the, all of the ends together. Now for the mapping for this set, we didn't draw it on the eye patches because we kept it super simple for a beginner and we only used a short length and a long length as you can see in this still picture. We used the shorter ones in the first half and the longer ones in the second half to get a simple cat eye look. Now we only added a few shorter ones in the outer corners just so the very long ones are not at the very edge and doesn't make the eyes look droopy but kept it super simple as you can see if you're new to volume fans or handmade fans i highly highly recommend using easy fanning eyelashes the yegi mega volume 2.0 lashes are super easy to fan even a beginner can get this nice soft volume look using those lashes so here is a little clip of how to use them Now we're just going to go ahead and apply the handmade fans until the eyelashes get full. So our goal is to go ahead and apply to every single one of the natural eyelashes, just leaving out the very small baby eyelashes because they are not strong enough to hold a fan. But every other eyelash, we do want to make sure we place a fan on. This is what's going to ensure that we're going to have a nice long lasting set. Okay, and with that said, again, make sure that your isolation, as I really go in detail in some of my other videos, is very clean and clear. You want to make sure you're only applying the whole fan onto one natural eyelash. This is very important in order to protect the client's natural eyelashes and make sure we don't cause damage to them because every single one of our natural eyelashes have a little bit of a different growth rate and if too many things are stuck together, they are going to pull on each other. So take your time and isolate well and only one fan goes on to one natural eyelash. Let's talk about eyelash extension adhesives for a minute. I do want to let you guys know the three main things that defines an adhesive. Now it's mainly, it's of course it's formula, but it's mainly it's dry time, what humidity it should be used in, and also what temperature it should be used in. Those are the three things you want to look out for an adhesive to make sure that it's a good fit for you and that you can use it properly for your sets okay so a quicker drying glue like a half a second to one second glue is a good glue to use for volume eyelash extensions because the glue dries quickly it's going to be able to hold your fans nice and open and stick to the natural eyelash as well 
For this, I recommend the Ultra Bonding Adhesive, and we'll link this below. This is a brand new glue that we just released. It's even quicker drying than our Mega Hold and our Transparent Glue, which will allow your fans to stick right away. But keep in mind, you want to make sure the humidity and the temperature of your room meets the requirements of the glue, and all of that description will link it below, and it's on the product description on the website but also if you're taking longer time to create a fan you do want to use a volume specific glue that is medium drying so it's not super quick drying but it gives you enough time to create the fan and really place it straight and and align it to the natural eyelash before it gets a chance to dry so one negative with a very quick drying glue is that if you're newer and takes you a minute to really direct the fan onto the natural eyelash it can get in your way of it bonding well with the natural eyelash because it'll dry before you get it to where you want to get it so for this type of um service i would recommend the volume specific adhesive and again we'll link all of that below please let me know if you guys have questions i hope that's clear enough Another question I want to answer within this video that I get asked a lot is what makes a set a light volume set? And the answer to that is, is the fan itself that you're hand creating. So even with the easy to fan eyelashes, as I recommended, if you are a beginner with those, you can create as big or as small fans or as narrow or as wide fans as you would like to achieve the look that you want to get. For example, if your fans are not as wide and they're more narrow it's going to create a denser or darker looking set compared to a light fluffy looking volume set is where you would use a wider fan and maybe not as many eyelashes within your fan my go-to number of lashes to use for a light fluffy volume look is between three to five okay so that's a range and it's okay if one eyelash has three fans one eyelash has four one eyelash has five if you keep it about at that variety it's gonna give you that um light fluffy volume look not every single one of the eyelashes have to have the 3d fan and again if it's a 3d fan it means there's three little eyelashes that's making that fan Compared to another eyelash, if it's a 4D fan, there's four little eyelashes making that fan. So keep in mind, it's okay to mix and match and do some three, some four, some five to get this full fluffy volume look. I also usually like working on one eye at a time, and this is because I think I can go faster be compared to going back and forth between the two eyes. And the way I make sure that we're going to do about the same amount or even amount of extensions is by paying attention to how many eyelashes I'm using from my lash strip. So if I use about half of that lash strip, I make sure I use about the same amount on the other eye so they're even. And of course, I visually look and compare and contrast to make sure that they're even. But now that we're done with the right eye, let's jump to the left eye and we'll actually draw in the mapping onto this eye so you can also see it physically on the eye patch as well. Now for this one, we're using the thicker Sharpie. I do definitely recommend using the fine point thin Sharpie to draw it in. It writes on almost every surface and it makes it a lot easier to see your mapping. If you pay attention, you will see that for the left eye, we switched our isolation tweezers from the G10 to the A3. And the reason for this is because, and it depends on the person too, but because of the angle of the eye and, and the lash artist or the the tweezer angle itself, some tweezers like the A3 will be easier to use for your non-dominant hand to isolate. So I would recommend trying that for the left eye or the non-dominant eye to see if it's easier for you but a lot of people do also just use a curved tweezer like this which is the a3 um, like a standard curved tweezer to isolate both eyes but if you notice the switch that is the reason why we've switched the tweezer and we are still using the boots tweezer which is the a4 in order to make and apply our fans 
Now, this is a great example of what your isolations should look like. They should be nice and wide and open where you see clearly one of the natural eyelashes that you're going to apply on. You don't want to see multiple eyelashes when you're isolating because you are going to place your fan onto one natural eyelash and the place you're placing it is one to two millimeters away from where the lash is growing out so do not touch the skin that's the proper place to place it now if you're looking to learn more about eyelash extensions make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel and also go check out the other videos we have a lot of videos that cover details and step by steps and give me comments and feedback and let me know what you guys think Here's an example of how you can glue the fan underneath the natural eyelashes. So usually a lot of people glue the fan above, which means like on top of the natural eyelashes or to the left or to the right. And those are all correct. As long as the fan is directed and it's sitting straight, that is okay. But you can also place it underneath the natural eyelash. It almost hugs the eyelashes and lasts longer. Lastly, we're going to do a brush through to see how the lashes are sitting. If there's any eyelashes that are out of place, we'll go ahead and remove those. Or um, if not, we like the way they look, that's when we're going to go ahead and make sure we dry them for three minutes and then apply the super bonder to seal and make sure we have a long lasting um, eyelash extensions.